Now, so that's fine. So let's look at like this concrete example. And again, this image is, let's say 512 cross 512. And you can have any uh, CNN backbone over here. So if you have like a proposal like this, then what you can do is, and again, I think we have seen this example uh, earlier as well. So earlier, what used to happen is you will compute like uh, the X and Y location uh, for these coordinates, right? And then you will quantize those. But now in this case, we can actually take these fractions as well. It doesn't matter. We don't have to make 6.25 equal to six or 9.25 equal to nine. We don't have to perform that discretization. We can still keep like 9.25 or 4.53, whatever these fractions are. And again, depending upon like what's the target size, we will create those uh, grids inside this uh, map. And depending, uh, again, we can use just bilinear interpolation and that will figure out whether we have to use these values or not. So in this case, what will happen is if some of the cell is actually not overlapping a lot, we won't use that value. And it may happen that to get like value for one pixel, we might use multiple values in these cells. Right? And if it's like, let's say, just partial, uh, partially overlap, then we won't use like the full value. There will be some weight assigned to that. So less weight will be assigned to that pixel location if it's not completely overlapping. Okay, for example, so that's coming from the same example here. It's just like zoomed in version. And in this case, let's say we are doing three cross three pooling. So the, the values here, yeah, so this is ROI pooling because these values are not considered. But for ROI align, what will happen, you will divide this grid into three cross three. And this is going to be your first shell, first cell. Okay, similarly, you will have eight other cells because if you look at the target, the target is three cross three, right? Yeah, so this is the division. You will just divide this into three cross three cells. And now the goal is to get value for each of these cells, which will which we'll, we are going to put in this three cross three RI pooling uh, feature map. Okay, so in this case, it's just showing you like one of the cell. And again, you can compute like the height and width of this cell. It doesn't have to be like a perfect uh, number. It can be fraction. Right. So then again, we find these equidistant points. Okay. So again, you know the height and width, right? You have uh, all the information here. You can just find like the coordinates, the x, y coordinates of these values, because you know coordinate of this corner, you know coordinate of this corner. So all the, these four corners. If you're dividing like into a grid, you know the coordinate of this value as well, uh, this corner as well. Similarly, you can find coordinates of all these four points. So each cell, again, you are dividing into like three cross three. And again, you can make it more denser, but it was, three cross three was used. And the idea was to have like just four values for each cell. Okay. Now, what you can do is for each point, so now you have four points for each cell, right? So for each point, you will get a value and you will figure out what are the closest four values for this particular target. And you will just compute the distance from those four values and use like this bilinear interpolation equation, which we discussed in the last lecture. So if you look at this first point over here, so if you try to find out what are, the, what are the closest four pixels, so you have this pixel over here. Okay, you will just look at the center. You have this pixel over here. It's coming from this cell, then this cell, and this cell. And let's say if the values are like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 1, or 0 0.7, it could be like any number, just fine. Now, all you have to do is just use this equation to find what will be the target value at this location because you know the, you actually know the coordinate of this center as well. Similarly, you know the coordinate of all these three centers as well. And you know the coordinate of this point, you can just compute the Euclidean distance between these two. Right? So depending upon how far it is from these four values, we'll find this distance and just put it in this equation. And those will be like the weights. And that will give you just one number. 
which will be the value at this location. And similarly, you can find value for all the other locations as well. Okay, so this is the second location. Again, you can see that this is closest to this one, this one, this one, and this one itself. And again, since this is very close to point two, so this value will be like have very high weightage from point two, so it will be very close to point two. And since this is far from these three, it won't have, these three won't have that much weightage, but still they will be considered. Okay. Now, once you have that, you, you can just take like either max of those, you can do average of those. So you know, like different pooling operations, right? So for example, if you just pick max of those four values, and that's going to be 0.51, you just put that value at this location. Similarly, you can find values for the other cells as well. Okay, so in this case, what's happening, you are actually not discretizing your uh, pooling operation. You're not losing like any cell values. And also you are not kind of completely adding these values, right? Because if this point is far away from this location, then this pixel will still be considered, but only partially. The full value is not going to be utilized. So that's the key about uh, ROI pooling, and that's how it tries to avoid like losing information and adding unnecessary information, which at the end helps you in finding like a finer boundary of the object which is present in that inside this bounding box. Okay, so similarly, you can find like these four four values for all the cells using the same bilinear interpolation equation. And you can take max of those, and that's your output. All right, and again, you know, like it's not just one channel, right? Your feature like is a stack of multiple channels. You will do the same for all the channels, and you will get these features. And rest remains the same. You can just use these features for classification, for predicting the bonding boxes, and on top of that, you can have like a Segmentation, small network, few layers of convolution, which will give you the segmentation boundary. Okay, so that's the difference like between ROI pooling and ROI align. In this case, the first important point, we are not losing any information. You can see like there is no blue region, right? We are gaining some information, which is the green. But still, like it's it's not that we are completely relying on that. Depending upon how far we, uh, we are from that pixel, we will consider some weight for it, which is perfectly fine because we we still are there's some kind of overlap uh, with that that pixel location, right? So we should consider uh, some information from there, but not completely. In this case, there is no distinction. We just move it, right? And we just assume that okay, all of the information is actually important, which is not true. So this is ROI pooling on the right. The green one, you can see like additional information. And again, we don't have the distinction between whether this is important or non-important. In the first quantization step, we'll lose like this information, which is uh, dark blue. And again, when we try to do pooling, we'll have to get rid of this uh, other blue portion as well, because it doesn't fit like into your target shape. Okay, and all these uh, issues are actually resolved using ROI align. So that was the key actually of this work. Uh, which is mask RCNN. This is actually a very good work and it provides you very good results in not just detection, but also instance segmentation.